Cake Drake Nation. Welcome back to the Weekly Slither. I'm your host, Drake the True Snake. Today I have some important news that's going to come up at the end of the episode. So make sure you guys stay tuned through the entire episode to make sure you hear this. Also, I want to start out the show with a question that was left last week on, a, on my post for last week's episode about my non-comic superheroes. My bro, Kane J. Martin, asks if there was a non-comic animated superhero that I would want a live action version of, what would it be? And I would say it has to be Freakazoid. Now, I know that's kind of a given because it was my first one and I said it was my favorite, but I think this would be an amazing show because he's pure energy. It would be a really great one for the computer age. I think the effects on it would be amazing. And also, I think that th if you cast it right and you got the... And especially in the age of superhero movies, it would go over really well. So, studios, if you're looking, that would be a great movie. Pardon me. That would be a great movie to do. So, let's get started. Today, I want to talk about my top five most difficult video games that I've played. Now, I worded that weird, but these are the ones that I've played, and this is my top five. So, these aren't ones that I've made because I cannot make a video game to save my life. But, these are ones that I've played that I think are pretty difficult. Start with number five. I'll have to say it's The Amazing Spider-Man 2 on the Nintendo Wii. This is number five because the controls on it were ridiculous. <laughs> because of the Wii, they tried to incorporate both remotes. One hand would control the camera, and the other hand would control your actions and your move and your like fighting. This was very difficult to do because one of the first levels that you're doing is swinging around a gigantic rhino trying to deactivate these electrodes. It's very tough to do because you have to get the camera right, you have to make sure you're, because you can't see where you're going half the time unless you're like an expert in dual wield controls. So that was very, that was why it's number five. It's a really fun game but it was very hard to play. Number four is Rocket Power Team Rocket Rescue on the PlayStation 1. The reason it's number four, and a lot of you guys may have or may not have heard of this game. This was a kid's game by Nickelodeon back in the 90s when Rocket Power was at its peak popularity. This game is, you're, you're, you're playing as members of the Rocket Gang and trying to do different sports challenges throughout the game. But the challenging thing was there were time limits that you could barely finish. There were point values that no one could reach. And there were so many different, and the graphics, I mean, I know it was early PS1, but the way that everything was laid out was very complicated. So that's why it's number four. Again, really fun game, just little glitches were, were, the, were the issue. Details, that's what killed it. Number three, Manhunt for the PS2. This game was intense. It was, to give you guys a background, if you haven't heard of this game or haven't played it, you're an escaped convict trying to go through this crazy world, crazy violent world, and trying to survive, basically. And there's a lot of different missions and stuff you have to do. But the thing was, you couldn't take three steps in some levels without being caught and killed. That's what, that's what made me mad. It was very tough to be stealthy as you needed to be. Now, I'm not saying that's not a good part of a game, but it was a little too difficult to figure out. So that's why it's number three. It's right on the list of fun meets irritating. Number two, American Gladiators for the Super Nintendo. For those of you in my generation who have played this game, you understand. This game was based off the fun, the famous TV show of the time where it was an athletic competition. There were five, five levels to do and a lot of the iconic events such as the wall um, and the joust and things like that were on there. But one, no instructions, so you have no idea what you're doing. And two, the way the levels are set up are make you to fail. There are very complicated controls for a, such a simple controller. So in that realm of gaming, they could have done better and the reason it was difficult was you have no idea what you're doing and it's such complicated controls that you really have to, you basically have to play it enough to know, oh, this is what I do at this point. It's very tough to do. And finally, 
my number one most difficult game I've ever played is Pong on the Atari plug and play system. I can see your faces now. Pong? That's difficult? Let me explain. On the Atari plug and play, it has a power button, which is supposed to help you increase your shot speed. That's great, unless it gets blocked. And the other and the computer sends the power shot back to you. So unless you have lightning reflexes and you're basically a Jedi or Spider-Man, you're not going to be able to see that coming. And it's going to be very difficult to stop. So that's why it's my number one. It's a super simple game, but it's so, it's so difficult with its different attack variations. So I hope you guys enjoyed this list. This is the major announcement I wanted to do because of lack of interest and also just my own personal feelings of the channel, I'm going to switch back to vlogging, and this is going to be the last episode of The Daily Slither on my YouTube channel. Now, the I'm not going to stop doing a weekly show. I'm actually shifting it over to my SoundCloud, and I'm going to do a weekly podcast called The Audio Slither. I've done this before. It's I feel it's a lot more fun to do because it gives me a little more open uh, availability to speak on what I want to talk about, and also... <laughs> to be honest, it's a lot easier to do. So I hope you guys will be excited for that. I've noticed you guys are really excited about my vlogs, so I'm going to bring that back. I miss vlogging. It's a very fun thing to do, and I got to interact with more people that way. So I hope you guys are excited for the return of my vlogs. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the three-episode run of this show, those of you who have watched every episode. And I hope you guys will stick around for my vlogs. That's usually my... Like, my passion is just talking to you guys. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Make sure you guys go check out the Cake Drain channel, where we have some more videos coming very soon, along with my brother Kane, the other half of Cake Drain's channel. He is, uh, he has a gaming channel called Crafter, where he's been doing a lot of really cool, really fun gaming videos. He is has an amazing attitude. Such a great energy on that channel. He does really good stuff. And also, my buddy D-Rock up in Canada. Happy Canada Day. I know it's going to be a day late, but happy Canada Day to you guys. Yeah, where he has Wrestling Talk 1. Talks about all things pro wrestling and the real D-Rock 1. Where he just talks about whatever's on his mind for that day. So, make sure you, guys check out, make sure you guys go check out all those channels. And my SoundCloud. All the links are going to be down in the description as usual. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Peace out, and remember, Bruce!